Good morning, friend of mine. I am Pastor Hugh McKenzie, a pastor from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. A happy day to you and your loved ones. Every morning we share two chapters from the audio Bible narrated by Alexander Scorby and a devotional from one of the chapters shared. May you be spiritually blessed and refreshed as you listen. Please share the presentations so that someone else may be blessed. May God continue to bless you and your family as you listen every day. God bless you. The First Epistle of Paul the Apostle to Timothy, Chapter 2 I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Saviour, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle, I speak the truth in Christ and lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. I will, therefore, that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but, which becometh women professing godliness, with good works. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing, if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. Our text for meditation is Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 21. The Bible says, he that followeth after righteousness and mercy findeth life, righteousness, and honor. Again, he that followeth after righteousness and mercy findeth life, righteousness, and honor. Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 21. Today's message is entitled, Bible Predestination Part 2. Bible Predestination Part 2. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in times like these, we need a Savior. In times like these, we need an anchor. We want to be very sure our anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Be with us now as we study your word, for Christ's sake. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, because of a wrong view of the biblical idea of predestination, there are some who wrongfully believe that Judas was predestinated to betray Jesus and to deliver Christ to be crucified. But this is not the case. There are some, we say again, who wrongfully, who wrongfully believe that Judas was predestinated to betray Jesus, that God, as it were, like a clock, wound him up and just set him in motion like a robot to betray Jesus, and that Judas couldn't do anything else all his life but to follow the plan to betray Jesus. But friend of mine, this is not the case. For Jesus himself mentioned in Matthew chapter 18 and verse 7. Listen carefully to the text. Jesus says, Woe unto the world because of offenses. For it must needs be that offenses come. But woe to that man, woe to that man, that person, by whom the offense cometh. In other words, trouble will come from anywhere. Woe to that person by whom the offense cometh. And then more directly to the point, Jesus mentions in Luke chapter 22 and verse 22, And truly the Son of Man goeth, as it is determined, but woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed. Whoever that man is, woe to him, whoever that man is. 
and Christ appealed to Judas not to betray him. Now Judas did not have to be that one to betray Jesus because even though Jesus read his motive, Jesus tried to let Judas know that, hey, I know what you're planning to do. Come off that track, Judas. Jesus appealed to him. He said, one of you will betray me this night. Christ was giving Judas these hints to let him know that I know what you're planning to do, Judas. Get off that track. But Judas would not yield his stubborn heart. Friend of mine, the fact of the matter is that the Bible does speak of predestination. The Bible does speak of predestination. The question is, what is the Bible's teaching on predestination? What is the Bible's teaching on predestination? Let's consider a text. Romans chapter 8, verses 28 and 29. Romans 8, 28 and 29 states, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. The phrase is, Jesus says in the text, For whom he did foreknow, he also predestinate to be conformed, to be conformed to the image of his Son. Now, some inquire, If God knows whether I will be saved or lost, why bother trying to be a Christian? Some say, if God already knows whether I will be saved or lost, why bother trying to be a Christian? Friend of mine, the answer is simply this. While God knows everything because he is omniscient, we do not know the future. God knows the future. Therefore, we each must exercise our right of choice and choose either to accept or to reject God's grace. The key point is this, God's foreknowledge never interferes with man's free choice. God knowing the choices we will make for heaven or for hell, knowing this in his omniscience, he does not interfere with that choice. In other words, God knew that Judas would betray him. Jesus knew that, but Jesus did not get in the way to, 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 to bend Judas's arm to prevent him from betraying him. Jesus allowed Judas to make his choice. And so, as the text says, those whom God foreknew, he predestined. Listen well, in as much as God foreknows all, and since he predestined or planned that all would become like his son, this is evidence that God predestined none to be lost. God willed, God planned, God said, I have this plan that everyone will be saved. I'm making a plan so that everyone who wants to can be saved. God could look ahead and know who the elect would be. The first part of 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 2 states, Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. The elect were predestined to salvation only upon the condition of obedience. The elect were predestined to salvation only on the condition of obedience. Friend of mine, if you're bad and you find yourself doing wicked and evil and sinful things, it's not because God has bent your arm and bent your will and set you to do wrong and wicked and bad and evil things. No, what is happening is that you are making the wrong choice every day to do that which is bad and sinful and evil. But God promises power for you to do right. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let us pray, loving Father. We are so happy that you willed, you planned that everyone would have the opportunity of being saved. Help us to seize that opportunity today and to serve you faithfully so that when the role is called up yonder, we shall be there is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.